Hello, my little darlings. How are you? I hope you're ready to finish reading our story. Can you climb a cactus? I don't know. I don't think I would want to climb a cactus. We left off on page 171, so turn to page 173. We were waiting to see, we were predicting to see if she was going to go ahead and go to Arizona. Well, since the story is about climbing a cactus, did you predict that she would probably go to Arizona? I hope that was your prediction, because if the story is about climbing a cactus, then she's probably going to climb a cactus. And that's those cactuses are in Arizona. So since the story is about cactus, and cactus is not, it, plural is not cactuses, it's actually cacti. So learn something new every day, don't you? Now, we were supposed to fill out a little board and the top part of the board in your let in your academic calendar is the top two three squares are the characters the setting and the title so on your piece of paper on the top i want you to write who the characters are well so far the characters are erica so write down Erica on the top left corner. The top left would be right here. This would be the top left corner of your paper. I don't have any notebook paper here with me. I've been writing all over things. This would be the top left. Okay, top left corner. Write Erica, and it's spelled for you in your book. Okay. It's spelled for you in your book. So, Erica, and you could put her family. Erica and family. Okay? Then the setting goes in the middle. You don't have to write setting. Just, I'm going to, we're going to say what the setting is. So, where do you think the setting is? Outside her house? Well, where do they live? Did it say where they live? Let's look back. She wants to go to Seattle or Arizona, but she really wants to go to Seattle and Arizona is where her family wants to go. Now let's see. It's talking about a spring vacation, but it never really says where they live. But most of the story looks like it's happening outside, but we'll wait to fill that in. Okay, then the title and the author goes over here on the top on this side. So you have the characters, the setting, which we're going to wait for. And then over here you have the title and the author. We got to go back to the beginning of the story to find the title and the author. It's on this page right here where the cactus are. Okay, and right here. It says the title and the author. So I want y'all to write those down. The author, the author, it, or the title is You Can't Climb a Cactus. No, you can't climb a cactus. That would hurt. You Can't Climb a Cactus, and it's by Derek Barnes. Right under there it says by Derek Barnes, and that's who wrote the story. So that's the author, Derek Barnes. So you're writing that there. Now we can't get into the conflict and the resolution. Remember the conflict is the problem that's happening in the story. And the resolution is how the problem solved. Now the conflict right now, the problem, if some of y'all are really paying attention, the conflict is the what? It's what's wrong. What's happening? What we're trying to, what's kind of bothering the per, the characters in the story. But what's kind of bothering Erica? She's kind of sad because she wants to go to Seattle and her parents want her to go to Arizona. So the problem really is that she wants to go somewhere else for her vacation. But we want to make sure that we know. 
So turn back to page 172. Page 172. And they're looking out the window of an airplane. See right here? They're looking out the window of an airplane. So it looks like they're on their way to their vacation. So let's see. As the plane started to land in Arizona, they went to Arizona. Erica looked out the window. The desert was so flat. Look, she gasped, pointing to a huge bird far off in the sky. A vulture, said Dad. How many of you know what a vulture is? A vulture is a big, huge bird, and he he's one of the ones that's called a scavenger. What he does is he goes along and he eats dead animals that are left over. Kind of gross, huh? On page 173, Grandpa met Erica and her parents at the airport. I have a surprise for you, he told Erica as they walked to the car. From the car window, Erica saw a group of animals. Look, Grandpa, she said. Pigs! Javelinas, said Grandpa. They look like wild pigs, but they're a different mammal that lives in the desert. Javelinas are what on our ranch in, our, in Pearsall in Texas. It's about 40 minutes from our house, and we have javelinas on our land too. And she, her, they're talking about the same kind of pigs. Turn the page to page 174. Grandpa drove to a tall building. It was made mostly of glass. This is where I work now, Grandpa said. Erica read the sign. It said De Desert Nature Center. Look at that building. That looks like a fun building to go into and, find and learn some cool stuff. On page 175, can we go in, Erica asked. We sure can, Grandpa said. I'll sign you up for a tour. Grandpa handed Erica a guidebook. It's full of facts about the things you'll see, he said. Then the guide took Erica and a small group of other children to explore the nature center. Ooh, that sounds like fun. They get to go out and explore and look at all the cool stuff in that area. Do you think they're going to see some cactus? I bet they will. Okay, now... Just to make sure you know, a guide, hopefully you learned this when you did your vocabulary, a guide is a person that takes you around and shows you things like when we went to the museum and that we had a person that showed us some things and then we got to go off on our own and see things by ourselves. But there were people helping us, like when we dug in the sand and there was a gentleman that came over and told us all about what we were looking at after y'all dug up the bones. That's a guide, okay? All right, turn the page to 176. First, they went inside to see animals. Lizards scampled up the glass wall. Scorpions and beetles crawled through the dirt. Scorpions and beetles. The tour came to a family of javelinas. Those are the pigs. Yay, squealed Erica as two baby javelinas scurried by. It was so cool to see them up close. Next, the tour went outside. They walked near a stream lined with colorful wildflowers. Erica tried to match the wildflowers with the pictures in her book. Then the guide's phone rang. Please excuse me, she said as she walked away. So look, look at those pictures of all that cool stuff that they're getting to look at. I think that's really awesome. So, be thinking while you're looking at all this stuff, would you like to go on, the, on a trip like this and see all this cool stuff? You saw a lot of this kind of stuff when we went to the museum in the Texas area. Hmm, I wonder what that phone call's about. On page 178, while the guide was gone, Erica took over the tour. She used her guidebook to share fun facts about the plant. The other children love learning from someone their own age. So Erica's using her guidebook. She took over the tour. She's telling everybody about what's going on. 
When the guide returned, she let Erica finish leading the tour. She would be a guide, she told you should be a guide, she told her. Why don't you be my assistant? So Erica got to be the assistant. I know some of you in class that would love to do something like that. The guide invited Erica back. For the rest of the week, Erica went to work with Grandpa Zach. While Grandpa did his job, she helped with the tours. When it was time to go home to Seattle, the guide gave Erica a gift. It was a little cactus plant. Oh, look at that little cactus. Maybe we should get a cactus for our classroom if we ever get to go back. That sounds like a good idea. Whoops. On page 180. Back home, Erica missed Arizona. She decided to make an Arizona corner in her room. She hung photos from the trip. Then she put the cactus on a little table. Erica loved to look at her cactus. It always reminded her of Arizona and the best vacation ever. It's true you can't climb a cactus, she thought. You sure can love one, though. Look at her shelf. She Look at all of her stuff from Arizona. She has pictures of Arizona. She has her cactus. She has all her toys. So that's really cool, huh? So, now, what did it say? It always reminds her of Arizona and the best vacation ever. Now, do you remember what was what she said about going to Arizona in the beginning? I remember she was saying how she didn't want to go, that Seattle would be the best place to be. But now what is she saying? Arizona is the best place to be. That was her best vacation ever. So she really changed her mind, didn't she? Okay, so for conflict, the problem was what? She didn't want to go to Arizona, right? So for the conflict in the middle, in the middle of your paper, Erica didn't want to go to Arizona. That's your conflict. That's the problem in the middle of your paper, okay? She didn't want to go to Arizona. That's under characters. Then under setting and under the title and author, right under there, just skip a few lines and in the middle put, well, what was the resolution? What did we just read? She actually what? Loved going to Arizona. So Erica loved going to Arizona. That's the resolution. She really, really liked it after all. So Erica loved going to Arizona. Now I'm going to let you fill out the beginning, the middle, and the end on the bottom of your paper on the bottom of your paper, like this, just put beginning, middle, and end. Not these words, don't worry about that, but on your paper, underneath the conflict, write beginning, in the middle of the paper, middle, end, and then tell me what happened at the beginning of the story, what happened in the middle of the story, and what happened at the end of the story, okay? You can do that. You're good at that kind of stuff. We've been doing that all year. Okay, then have your parents take a picture of it and just email, uh, dojo it to me or text it to me and that'll be your little grade for the week. And since grades are due today, I'm going to take that grade and put it toward the next six weeks. Okay, so you don't have to rush or worry about getting it in today. If you don't get it in until this weekend or Monday, that's fine. Okay, all right, because I've already got all your grades done for for this time. So I don't want you to worry about getting this assignment in today. If you don't get it in, like I said, if you don't get it in until this weekend or Monday, that's fine. Okay? All right. Well, I love you. I hope you had a good week, and I hope you have a very nice weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.